Hi everyone, I'm Bruce Schwartz. Let's jump right into it. Yes, let's do so. So, how are you all doing? It's summertime, finally. Um, we're in hell here. It's like hell. It's 44 degrees with the Humidex and it's scorching hot. But that's what us Canadians do. We complain in the winter because it's minus 40,000 degrees and we complain in the summer because it's plus 40,000 degrees. So we get a bit of a taste of everything. We get the taste Antarctica. We get a bit of a taste of, um, you know, Hawaii, you know, volcano, lava, because that's basically what's flowing in the rivers. The water is, is scalding. I think it's cooking the fish. Guys, thanks and welcome. And yeah, you, you guys think I'm exaggerating. I eh? know it was bad. It's bad here today and tonight it's 97 in the house with the air conditioning on upstairs it's 88 i'm telling you it's something else that's some nice close shots of the surface with my cgxl 1400 high definition telescope the high definition was a choice that i had when i bought the telescope when the community bought this telescope when i went to get the telescope i was asked if i wanted the high definition or the one without the high definition. I could have saved, we could have saved $1,500, but instead I went ahead to get it. The difference, what people are not understanding, and of course, unless you have a telescope, you probably would not know, seeing the craters and craterlets. What are craterlets? They're smaller craters. They're often referred to, the term um, astronomers use is our craterlets. And those craterlets, can be seen upon zooming up. And the bigger the telescope, uh, of course, the clearer, the more H high definition, obviously, the better the quality of the image, the more of these objects we're going to see. And there are things that we are seeing, like right here when we zoom up, and you'll see a bit later on, that we're seeing what looks like often rocks or boulders, objects anyways, that are side by side and that veer off in 90 degree angles. That should not be, because naturally formed, it would not be like that. And these are the things that we have to go by. The common sense, without even having to zoom up, without even having to filter anything, the proof is right before us, just using the common sense. Hey guys, watching the Apollo landing, several of them, most of them, why do we hear volume? My brain exploded today. Space is in a vacuum. I'm no genius, but I learned some basic things and some things that were pretty important to know. And by knowing these things, it often rules out a lot of the bullshit. How could they be hammering on the surface of the moon, making noise with their hammers as they're driving objects in for their experimental tests and taking readings and whatnot and samples? They're driving in this thing into the Earth, uh, into the moon, sorry, the lunar surface, and we are hearing a noise. There's no sound in space. There is no noise. I'm serious. I've heard an astronaut this year talking. No, unfortunately, I don't know his name, but just look it up. It's out there. Just look up the term that I'm saying right now. It's important using keywords. We're talking about. And the key words that you're going to use when you're looking up um, to see if it's true what I'm saying is sound in space or space in a vacuum. Look up what they mean by that and you'll understand very clearly how it's absolutely impossible that we could have heard them um, hammering on the surface of the moon. Hearing their voices, okay, probably because they're talking in a microphone. Is it because we're hearing the hammering through the sounds of their microphones? I also looked in how to see how the helmets were made and uh, you know how the microphone was placed in the side, the ear, the helmet, etc. And I'm curious as to why we're hearing sounds on the surface. How could we? I heard an astronaut very recently, two or three months ago, say that we do not hear sound in space and that on the space station he 
finds it incredible that he's sitting there banging with heavy hammers to hammer in whatever they need to hammer in on the outside on the space journey working you know outside of the space station hooked to the space station hammering away on metal banging away on metal they do not could not hear any sound well why in the apollo landings that we hear them hammering on the surface and we hear them uh, the tools etc i got some nice footage nice and close uh, the moon is out tonight. It's a bit small, a lot smaller, of course. It's orange. It's so warm here today. It was so warm. And um, I believe that they're announcing this heat for the entire week. I also uh, look at news all over the world, of course, of everything happening, events, etc. Also weather. And I noticed that um, U.S. <laughs> uh, are also going to undergo a heat wave that's going to last for many days. So... Yeah, it's going to be hot, scorching hot. So you guys are going to, you know, need air conditioning if you want to sit inside and watch a video because I'm telling you, um, I was not inside very um, long today. I was outside trying to stay in shade, um, get some wind. There's no wind in the house. It's that hot. And am I going to shut up? Yeah, that's what I should do. I should shut up. I don't talk to you guys enough and... You know, I don't see it, all of your faces. I really, really wish you guys were all in the same town. And we could just all get together on the weekend. And I could show you guys some of these uh, videos here live on a big screen without any, um, you know, as clear as possible, obviously, because the original footage is uh, the best quality all of the time. But when I have the observatory, it is something I'm going to make public and I am going to deliberately have events here. Um, I want to interest people in space. I want people to be interested in space. And of course, uh, the smaller telescopes that I have here, if people are interested around my area, I will, I will be giving them, the, uh, them a way to be able to interest some people, uh, give them a little course, um, whatnot, with the telescope for free, and to interest people, just to get integrated in this beautiful uh, secret that not many people know about it. I don't even know if 5% of the world knows about this, guys. The moon has um, activity. Who they are, what they are, we don't know. And I'm not going to tell you who or what they are. All I'm going to tell you is that someone's up there. And that's all I wanted to know. There is. There definitely is some kind of a being, human or not, up there you know and some people are saying well it could be this could be droids could be robot let's not get into that like who well no that's sort of rude it's not what i mean it's that my interest is not finding out who's up there my interest is proving that there is activity up there it's not going to solve anything finding out or trying to guess who it is we probably never will be able to do that but Seeing the activity, being a witness of it, well, that's another story. Now, how come I'm not seeing UFOs? I'm really curious. Listen, I've seen every single time I've gone up with a four-inch telescope. And when I say UFOs, I see them all the time. But I mean the ones that are between Earth and the moon. Do you imagine how clear it's going to be catching a UFO with this nice, close footage slowed down we are going to see shapes of objects guys this is really cool it's coming it's coming close it's gonna happen the big one's coming
some space news. I promise every video now we're going to get a little update on exactly what's going on. What is space related? There's news going on right now like crazy. And something very interesting is that we have another problem on our hands. Uh, well, NASA does and uh, so do some of the people sending up rockets here and there. You know, they're giving a license now, um, temporary license to people that are gonna be testing new objects and vessels, etc. Well, there's a problem. Uh, the policies um, of Article 9 of the Outer Space Treaty, uh, which requires countries to avoid harmful contamination and also adverse changes in the environment of the Earth, resulting from the introduction of extraterrestrial matter. Yeah, um, there's a lot going on. What's going to be floating up there? You know, what is floating up there now that could be dangerous and falling back down on the earth? It's interesting when you think of it. Thanks for watching, everyone.